that's it. Kenneth, hello. How are you doing, buddy? Thank Very you so well. much for having me on your show. Thank you for having me on your show. I think uh, no, <laughs> I think I think the thing I like about podcasting the most is like even if you guys are from like two different places or from you know your uh, your beliefs are different, like you can share your shows and and everybody kind of gets along in the podcast world a little better. You know what I mean? I don't think it's Absolutely, at that man. at that level yet. Like I said, uh, like we were saying before, like I was uh, I was playing video games originally. Um, and video games can be fucking ultra toxic. You know, you, can, you get to, you hear some of the the most outlandish shit from uh, some twelve year old fucking halfway around For the world, sure. Dro- dropping sure. en- dropping end bombs, just saying he's gonna fuck your mom, and you're like. What? Oh yeah, for sure, dude. <laughs> what kind of games did you get into when you when you play? Are you like a Call of Duty kind of guy? Or 100%. You... Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm one yeah. of those like uh, Call of Duty rages, man. I'm. Uh, I'm too old to be good at it. You know what I mean? Like, do you know how like right. young people are coming up and they're they're absolute freaks at it and they're just. And uh, I'm just some old dude yelling at, yelling at kids. Dude, I'm in the same boat, man. You know, I tried Call of Duty one time. I got online, and. I didn't even know I was doing. I was, I was like, I got shot instantly. It was just, it was crazy. You know what I mean? It's just, yeah, it's an the immediate. Coordination, the coordination with it is, is yeah, insane. it's a, just a ridiculous level of uh, like skill that's involved, uh, and I just True. don't have it. I uh, I was born without it, <laughs> and yeah, I remember like originally I tried to get into like Fortnite, uh, and <laughs> fucking hell, man, I, uh, right. that, it, it's I don't understand how kids. I don't either, man. But fucking don't yeah, get ADD know, from it. <laughs> what, what, made, what made you want to get into podcasting, though? Just I can, uh, and networking, or I can talk underwater. <laughs> I can. I've. Uh, I was a, a PT for a long time, so like my job was just talking to people, like all okay. the time, and it was always. And like now, I'm studying psychology, so it was like, fuck, waiting for my uh, like my degree to be done. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna start talking to people now. I think the best way to to learn, like I love talking to people. Like I've traveled. Uh, and I'm always that guy that's just like harassing people at the pub to tell me their stories. So now I can just do it online. Really? That's, talk- that's, that's, that's fascinating. Yeah. You know, to- for me, it was kind of like the opposite, you know, cause I was, uh, you know, I'm always kind of like introverted a little bit yeah. and kind of shy about talking to people. Uh, and this was kind of a way to break out from that, to kind of reach out and find a new networking way of connecting with people from all over the world because you're from the land down under right australia from australia man yeah right right and like i'm all the way across the other side of the planet you know and it's just it's super fascinating it's it's been a good ride like um i think i've only just hit the three month mark the 90 days like i can only tell that because um because of the apps that i use to to do it so and it's it's insane the, the the people that i have spoken to in those like three months it's it's i think it's one of the like the best avenues for people i guess in any like me being an extrovert you being an introvert where you can you, you get to sort of pick and choose who you want to speak to um right. and, and then you can learn and take something from it directly rather than hearing like i think in the world that we live in today it's just like you, you get a bit of information about somebody and that's that's them forever and you just you put it in a box uh, and that's it. So rather, I was finding myself doing that a lot. So now it's like in the in the podcast world, you can actually just fucking sit down and talk to them. Uh, right. You get it right from the source. Uh, but then you, like I said, you can also just get different perspectives. So it's like, I think even me talking to you, you being like American, there's always like in Australia, like there's, we think we know what Americans are and what they do and like just by the stuff that you hear. So it's good to like, you just sit down and have a chat to one. Uh, right for hey yeah. man, I appreciate that. You know, and if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them the best I can. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure we'll get into it. Um, so what is your what is your podcast about? Like, what is your what do you what do you usually do, man? Uh, you know, I I like to talk about just about everything. I like to get into conspiracy theories, man. I like to get into yeah. spirituality a little bit. You know, uh, really kind of out of the box things that aren't normally talked about or that people are kind of afraid to talk about, you know, yep. are some of the subjects I like to get into. I also like to talk about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. So uh, I talk about that a lot on my YouTube channel, you know? Yeah. 
but uh yeah that's just kind of what it's about you know what i mean because i've kind of had my own little journey um to spirituality and and all that and it's just kind of branched off from there you know yeah it's uh it's good man i think it's um once again it's like we live in a world now we don't need to be so you got one path and that's it you know how it's like you know maybe our parents generation and their parents generation where it was like like you pick one fucking job (laughs) <laughs> and like everything outside of that doesn't exist and you do this one thing uh until you're 70 uh and then you retire and then you still stay in that your same hometown and stuff you know what i mean so it's good to have right, for sure for sure man you know because like you said you know it seems like we're brought up with this idea you have to get married in your 20s you have to you have to follow this set yeah set set of rules and you know to kind of break away from that uh take some courage you know i just did a video actually i just uploaded it right before we we uh met online here about courage a little bit and you know that's what it's all about man you know it's about learning and growing in my opinion and uh that's what this this channel's been about i guess yeah that's you know? awesome man that's uh like i said i'm all, I'm all for people uh uh for wanting to to br- branch out and sort of learn something new about other people um like I said, I, I wish I could have done it through through gaming because I enjoy gaming, but I found it's 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 too hard to keep those two things together. You're like, I love gaming right. and I like talking to people. And you can only do one at a time when you're doing it. Right. Like you can For only sure. do one pretty well. Um, so like podcasting is a it's a really good avenue and I'm uh I'm a big advocate for it. And I just hope there was like maybe a little bit more push to to bring up some uh some of the smaller ones because uh like the, I think the market is like oversaturated. Like Joe Rogan is just everywhere. Like he's right, talking for sure. and it's just big, big old Joe. Um, what are some of the conspiracies you talk about on your podcast, man? Oh man, uh, you know, on the podcast so far, um, gotten into some alien stuff. You know, I like to to talk about alien stuff. Yeah. And you know, conspiracy theory is a you know the the term conspiracy theory is a very watered down kind of you know <laughs> yeah sorry i'm trying to fix my life no you're no, uh, oh, you're all right you're all right um all of them man i'm into all of them <laughs> yeah the alien you things know. uh it's a it's a weird one it's a it's a, a weird one where it like sort of collides with religion and old belief where it's like it does it they really can't be does. they can't it's human arrogance where it's like they can't be something better than us out there but there's right. a there's a giant man in the sky <laughs> and you're like what the fuck <laughs> like doesn't right. make any sense like you could believe like this fucking this this guy who lives in this kingdom in the sky but you can't believe in the fact that there could be you know somebody else out there right for sure yeah you know and that's the thing man you know i'm asked is everything a conspiracy theory well yeah it kind of is really because i feel like on all aspects things are manipulated you know if you look at our water you look at our air you look at our food you look at our history all these things are manipulated and what what isn't a conspiracy theory you know yeah going back to religion a little bit you know it's like has it been manipulated to kind of control the masses and you know i believe so <laughs> you know from my opinion yeah but i think it definitely you know, I, like religion was cre- like i think religion touches on on just human like human emotion um so it's like like the the god and the devil thing, the the right and the wrong, how it's so right. clearly defined through religion, that everybody has those thoughts. Uh, like you get into any situation where it's like it's a choice, and you go, all right, well I can do this and li- like come away morally clean, um, or I can do this and gain a little bit, but morally it's 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 unjust. You know what I mean? So and I think it's just expanded on that to the point where it's like all right, well, cool. You can do that. And then now there's a strict set of rules behind it. And if you don't follow the rules, like a uh, giant man in the sky is going to spank you. <laughs> right. Yeah. And you're going to, yeah. And and the thing is, man, you know, I honestly believe that everybody is on their own path and it has their own path to, you know, lead them to their higher selves. But, you know, so no disrespect to anybody out there that, you know, does follow set practices that have been in place for a long time, you know, but for me, it's been more about uh, the fact that there seems to be an entity that likes to leverage 
um, death against the sanctity of life, you know, yeah. that there's this fear of, of death that we get from a very young age. And we kind of carry that with us and what it means to pass on. And it's used as a control factor. You know, it seems like the fear of death is, how do I, how do I say this? I feel like it's used to keep us trapped in this realm and tied to this realm, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, like that makes perfect sure. sense. But I, I, like, this is why, like, you being a conspiracy guy, and this, I've, I've had this discussion with so many people, um, especially like now with like the five G and the COVID mm-hmm. thing, where they're like they're trying to chip us. I think yeah. uh, like people really put themselves on a pedestal, uh, thinking that they are super hard to control. Um, humans are incredibly easy to control if you've got enough time. Absolutely, uh, um, yeah. it, you control it through what they what they can see like media is a big one that controls and you don't need to do big changes. So like, and I think it's one of those things. It's like, if, if we know about this and there's some dickhead from Australia talking about how easy it is to control people, there's people in like government positions who are much smarter than I am, who have been studying it for years who know this. So it doesn't like, so even like you're saying, like just the fear of death being a a control uh, like mechanism where they can sort of like, leverage a bit of control out of people that's all they need like they don't need very much more they just need to there's always like you can control people just by by offering a consequence um right. and that's all like they don't need to chip you they don't need right. a do you believe in it do you believe in the chip thing you know I, you know man there's a lot of conspiracies out there about the chip being like in the vaccine and you know the vaccine kind of alters our DNA to where it re it responds to 5g. Yeah. Um, you know, and I've heard a little bit about that, but I, you know, I don't know, man. It's so really far. It's such a stretch. You know, it, like, my, you know, my, sorry, you go. I'm sorry. No, you go. Oh, I was just going to say, it's just, it's just too far of a stretch for it to be, to be true. You know what I mean? For sure, dude. And I don't know what, I don't know what all we're allowed to talk about. You know what I mean? But oh, as far everything. as the vaccine goes, you know, like, I'm totally anti-vaccine, man, yep. you know, because here's the thing, dude, how many billions of dollars did Bill Gates, you know, pump into getting this thing rushed through? There's just so much shady shit around the vaccine, man, that just totally turns me off. You know, I don't trust it. I don't, I, I, I will never get it, you know, but to each their own, yeah, nothing against, right. yeah. you know. So I think I like, I look at it like this. It's like, if a stranger came up to you on the street and was like, here's $500, where does your brain go? You immediately go, this ain't right. There's something behind it. There's something (laughs) odd. Do you think that maybe the, like the Bill Gates thing, like Bill Gates, Bill Gates can't be that bad of a dude. Can he? Like he's, he's spent billions of dollars giving it to charity, helping people out. And you think like now at the end of his life, he's like, you know what? I'm going to become an evil billionaire. That's the thing, man. You know, I, I don't, what, what's motivating people to do things outside of money? You know what I mean? The richest people in the world, you know, what motivates somebody to do things? And Bill Gates, you know, his father started Planned Parenthood. It's, you know, there's Bill Gates has been, you know, on on video talk about population control you know he owns more farmland in the u.s now than anybody and really what it comes down to if you listen to bill gates talk he's they want to control our life force energies you know i honestly believe that they want to control our food genetically modified foods they want to you know control our water, the fluoride in our water, they want to, you know, they cloud seed, there's chemtrails, that's on record. I mean, you know, it's all about controlling our life force energies, in my opinion, to kind of sedate us and keep us from discovering our true, our true selves, you know? Yeah. And if we're going to go down the rabbit hole, man, you know, you're going to think I'm nuts, but. (laughs) No, 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 let's, honestly, let's, like, I'm going to try and be objective as possible, but. (laughs) <laughs> I think that like, so the thing with the conspiracies, the reason why they get a bit of traction is because there's always a bit of truth behind them. Uh, like I said, the control thing, a hundred percent, but you just, I think with, uh, with control, you just got to look at our, how our working week is structured. 
let's let's drive people into the ground Monday to Friday, right? And let's put uh, bars and nightclubs just close enough to that workspace and in between their workspace and their home. So immediately after work on a Friday, people are going out. And then what do you do? You drink to excess to forget the the shitty work week you had. Uh, right. And then Saturday's a write off, and then Sunday you're prepping for Monday. So it's like, you know what I mean? It's like it's not hard it to is, control yeah. people. Just you, you just it's you really give them, not. no, you give them some good, you give them some bad, and uh, you set them on their way. So how far does this go down? Like you've obviously looked into it much more than I have. Uh, you know, I just think it ties in with with everything going on with the age of Aquarius, from the age of Aquarius, uh, you know, to prophecies to ancient civilization prophecies i feel like it all ties in to something going on that nobody knows for sure what it is yeah. but everybody has a pretty good idea you know and you know i feel like there's there's uh you know we're, we've entered the age of aquarius you know which the mayans predicted was 2012 everyone thought was the end of the world which really was just the end of a cycle you know i'm sure you've heard this yeah uh that yeah so i i think there's light codes coming from the sun and from the universe that are upgrading our dna and i think there's also um a force behind the scenes that is trying to keep us from evolving you know on a spiritual level from discovering our true powers within um and to kind of keep us divided because if you look at what's going on, it's nothing but dividing conquer tactics. It's nothing but psyops. You know, I don't even watch the news anymore. I don't even turn the news on. And the reason is, is because literally everything's propaganda. Everything is a psyop on our mind, man. It's just constantly divide and conquer. It's, you know, hate your neighbor because of this, hate your neighbor because of that. And, and that's really what it's, it's about in my opinion, you know, and, uh, getting back to um you know our humanity our our connections with people is on the front lines right now the resistance against that divide and conquer tactics that we've been seeing played out for so long yeah so yeah i like so i can agree with you like um it's it's not everywhere at certain places you go but the, i think the further we we sort of step away from these small tribes that we used to have so the 60s 70s 80s where you know post world war ii um you know obviously the population was down a little bit but things things were thriving back then because you know uh everybody was back at work everybody could do, could do stuff and then as these groups grow obviously harder to control so but once again it's like they put in i couldn't agree with you more in terms of like the things that you see and read uh really dictate how your life goes like i don't read the news either like i i, mm -hmm. I want nothing to do with it because it just it fills my head full of shit it's very hard to right. get away from the shit the only problem is like there's people out there it's an impossible to avoid information um and then it's like where are you getting that information from because there, as much as people want to tell the truth there's also people out there wanting to capitalize on on people finding the truth and, right. and waking up and who are just writing stuff you know writing it down um for sure yeah for sure there's definitely an information war going on yeah. you know and and discovering what to lead you to your higher self you know to lead you to your higher self you know what i mean yeah and through meditation and things like that i feel like you can get the truth your truth you know yeah in channel messages but uh you know <laughs> no no so but that stuff yeah. that stuff like even like just the 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 premise of meditation has been proven like it even if it doesn't reach you on like such a high spiritual level it can reach mm -hmm. you on like an individual level where gives you a bit of clarity uh reduces stress sure. and anxiety helps you sleep a little better um yeah but it's i think it's one of those things as well it's like the information you hear about people who do meditate they're hippies and they, they don't know what they're doing they're out there hugging trees and shit you know right uh, which yeah and it, it's been given like a bad yeah. you know rap because you know all oh, that's hippie stuff well you know since when did loving the earth and just wanting to you know find peace and 
and and happiness through <laughs> through yeah. connecting with nature and the earth become like a hippie thing and why no, why, why is it a bad thing you know what i mean why is that bad yeah, yeah, i think exactly. that's that's my problem with it it's not it's not the like why is being a hippie bad i think uh it's not yeah. it's not you know it's it's really not in my opinion <laughs> um you know. yeah i i don't think it is either but once again it's uh we we do live in a world where it's a versus b and it's like we we can't help ourselves but do that there's always like this weird pissing competition between humans to see who's better like mm-hmm. back in cave days like who's got the biggest stick and who can hunt right. the biggest thing and then it's just sort of like like really like gone and i don't know like you probably see it but like being in the states like i think the states from what we see in australia is like the best case of who's got the biggest stick or who thinks they do uh and then there's like the causes that they fight for initially sort of fall into the background to this pissing competition of you know who can be the loudest in the room um yeah you're not wrong (laughs) yeah that's it's it's fucking crazy like but we to be honest we get it here too we get um like the you can call them social justice warriors. I I don't think they are. I think they're just a little little misguided, and they get into a cause to to help, and they they become a little louder, right? Because as an individual, they want to stand out for a particular group and and be the best in that group, and and they they miss the mark, and that's the the type of thing that humanity creates. It's like that shit is ingrained in you from a child. It's like be the best in your class, be the fastest right. runner. And you'll get rewarded. So, and then if you don't get rewarded for those particular things, you you'll find something to be rewarded for. Um, for sure. And then that creates the A versus B because if you're good at something, and then somebody is you know equal or or just as good or or better, you go oh, but it's because of this, and you'll label it as your B. You know, because they're from a different political party or they're from this or that. And then that's why they got different beliefs. And and then you use it to just one up yourself. But to do that, you need to demonize the other side to to balance out For that sure. direction. Yeah. It really is. It's 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 a big mind game, mind control thing that starts, like you said, even at, at schools at a very young age. You know, I was fortunate enough to be homeschooled growing up. And but I, I look at the public school systems over here in the States and it's just like, wow, you know, it's just it just kind of blows my mind, man, at, at what kids are being taught versus what they're not being taught, you know? Yeah, and it's and it's kind of scary. You know what I mean? It, it really is kind of scary. But yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Right from the right from the get go, you know, uh, you know, little softball team or baseball teams, my team's better than your team type, you know, attitudes and you know everybody's a winner everybody gets a trophy type you know it's just yeah like i said there's there's just no way to balance it now you know what i mean like i guess as much as like uh having platforms like this help like people like me and you have a chat it also helps people big dick themselves like they can create groups and they can start Mm -hmm. you know like i guess it's like um i guess you can look at like any extremist group or cult type thing where it's it starts right. off as like just uh like a bunch a bunch of like foundational beliefs and then it over time just becomes crazier and crazier like right. just to you know but and then it's like you can look at that on an individual level with like um uh famous people where they start off relatively normal and then as they start to lose traction in terms of their life they start to become crazier and crazier so they become noticed and they stay relevant, even though it's through wrong paths. It's uh that shit is never gonna change, man. And I think why we keep reinforcing it and like like you said through schooling, yeah. the school curriculum is shit everywhere, man. It's it's it always, is. it's based off like here's what we need in terms of jobs. Uh let's push kids towards it. And uh the kids that don't well do well can fuck off. And the ones that do do well we'll give them everything until we don't need them anymore. Right. For sure. For sure. I do apologize for my notifications. I keep popping up too and hey. call it background noise. Um, Nothing wrong but, with being uh, popular, man. Nothing wrong with being popular. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, what you just said kind of brought me up, brought this thought to my mind about 
everything you know we see all this this stuff going on all these negative things going on right and uh, especially with this past election that we had over here, you know, I became very emotionally invested in this election more than I really thought I would. Yeah. And after, after it was over, you know, I really took a step back and was like, wow, you know, I let a lot of different fears dictate my life and, you know, cloud my vision and really, you know, prevent me from being happy in a lot of ways. And I, when I stepped back and I realized I was like, it started, that's when it kind of started the whole podcasting, the whole, you know, I need to redirect energy inward and start focusing on, on inward growth, you know, spiritual growth, mental growth, uh, you know, just myself, you know what I mean? And what I can affect around me because all this, all this shit that we're seeing on the news and they tell us about, we have no control over, it, you know what I mean? We have control over the small circle and the influences we have in people's lives. And I think that's where the energy needs to be redirected is. And that's where you're going to see the biggest change, you know, because this right here, you, you know what I mean? You and me talking right here, this is huge for me. Like I never would have thought I'd be, you know, doing podcasts, talking to, yeah. uh, you know, yeah, talking to people across the world. So yeah, it starts on a smaller level. Yeah, that's sure. that's exactly right. But um, yeah. I, I, think- I don't want to give the black pill type, you know, it's all doom and gloom like it's not. You know what I mean? It may look bad, but, you know, we could totally yeah. control how we choose to grow for sure. But that's right. And I think like, once again, if you if you can't be really good at something and rewarded for it, like you, what you, people, do, the pity party, you know, uh, like my life is worse than yours because of A, B and C. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, there's no external looking into it and go like, why did this happen? Or, you know, shit does happen, but shit happens to everybody. Right. Uh, right. But it's, it's much easier to get a quick reaction from somebody. If you're like, like this happened to me and they go, Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Uh, and then you go, somebody cares. Like I feel a little bit better rather than like internally fixing it and going like, all right, well like that sucks. And I'm not saying like people need right. to, people need to talk to people a hundred percent. For but sure. it's like, what extent do you need to, like, you don't need to go around telling everybody, um, you know, uh, right. For sure. Cause you'll get and that. I think a lot of that kind of ties into with shadow work too, man, you know, kind of recognizing that, you know, a lot of our identities are basically just trauma responses from when we were younger that we may not even know about, you yeah. know, uh, and addressing those, like realizing, okay, well, why do I react this way? You know, is that what's what's causing this? What's at the root source of this? You know, and so what what kind of you know? I'm curious, not to change the subject, but what kind of bugs and animals you guys have down there in Australia? That's what I'm trying to catch right now. There's like this weird little fly thing, and it's driving me bananas. Uh, (laughs) But in terms of like, it's like there it is, man. (laughs) I think I got it. Uh, Sorry, man. Um, no, it's good. You man, know, we, the, the bugs and, and and spiders and shit and and they're all dangerous. They will all kill you. Um, <laughs> this, oh man! I remember like when I was over in the states, uh, we we're driving to a beach with uh, with some friends, uh, and then like as we we're driving down the road, they like start screaming. I'm like, holy shit! There's a spider in the car, and they pull the car over, <laughs> and I, I was expecting like like this huge spider, and it was like this tiny right. little baby one. Like get rid of it! And I was like, yeah, you just just flick it out. And I was like, our spiders are so much different. <laughs> our spiders are fucking terrifying. They're are you huge. serious? They're huge. Dude, man. I- They're so big. <laughs> Uh, I freaking hate spiders, man. You know, when I was a kid, I was like six years old, and my brother's like, "Hey, Kenny, you gotta watch this movie." It was called Arachnophobia. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. I hated it. (laughs) That was all it took, man. And like, you know, not a spider fan at all. Yeah, yeah. It takes a particular type of person to be like. I don't go out of my way to like kill them or whatever. I just avoid them. Right. Um, Same here. Same here. But uh, yeah, Australia's full of dangerous shit, man. it's, it's funny when you always talk to people about it because it's so normal over here and you sort of grow up with it. Yeah. Um, like it's normalized. So you don't, you don't, you don't think too much about it. You For just, sure. you just avoid the certain spots that they tell you to avoid. Um, and you just sort of pay attention. Like you just need to be a bit more mindful when you go to like a, a public park or, or whatever. But then you tell like, like Americans about it and you're like, yeah, like, 
like pretty much every spider will, will like either make you incredibly ill or it'll kill you. Uh, same with the snakes. I think we have lots of snakes like in the top 10 of like, like dude, world that's crazy. Like, <laughs> crocodiles, sharks. Uh, oh my God, dude. Seriously. Yeah. Like snakes, poisonous snakes, man. I don't know if I could do that. Like, just be walking down the trail and have like a poisonous snake hop out and like freaking, oh, yeah. you know. And they're everywhere. And like, it's, and it's not just like reserved for like, um, like out, out uh, in the outback or out bush or whatever. Like this isn't like, r- like residential areas. Like you will find, I remember they used, to, they used to be like a, like a park where you take your kids and there was like a, like a brown snake nest underneath like the slippery dip. And so brown snakes are super, super deadly. It's super dangerous. Like and it just, yeah. So they just lived under the, under the, the slippery dip. And, uh, they kept what like, the heck is a slippery dip. You know, the, the thing at a park that you slide down. A slide. Yeah. It's a slippery dip. Slippery dip. Yeah. I've never heard that before. So right. we call them just, we just call it a slide. That's over. boring. Get that out of here. Start calling slippery, slippery dip. dip. I'm not to remember that. That's, yeah. That's cool. That's, oh, uh, that's cool. I don't know what I'd like slides here. Uh, I guess you could call it a slide. Yeah. I've never heard slippery okay. dip before. That's pretty cool. So here in Pennsylvania where I live, I live right up on the shore of uh, Lake Erie. It's the smallest of the great lakes yeah. over here. And, you know, I got, I'm, I'm fairly blessed. I'm thankful for where I live because, you know, we don't get tornadoes. I mean, we do once in a while, really small ones, but, you know, no earthquakes, no tornadoes, no tsunamis, no poisonous snakes, you know, yeah. slithering around. There's not too much danger, <laughs> you know, so. But you guys have, like, crazy other animals, like like cougars and bobcats and shit. <laughs> like, yeah. Up like, towards New York uh, in the mountains, yeah, a little bit. But, you know, they're more scared of you than you are them. They they go running. Oh, really? You know? I, yeah, like, yeah. But the only thing like we see here in Australia is like all the bad, it's like plane crashes, right? Like you only see bad, you know, plane rides. Like you never right. see the thousands of planes that land every day. Uh, right. You only see them crash. So it's like your immediate thing is like every time I get on a plane, I'm like packing it. I'm like, I can't, I'm stressed out. Like I'm sweaty. Uh, the thing takes off and I'm just stressed the whole way. Cause I'm like, this really? thing, this, yeah, I've I can't do it, man. Huh? Never been on a on a plane, man. Yeah, I know. I've been. I take that back. I've been on a little Cessna, but I've never been on like. Yeah, it's fun. That'd be terrifying. Like, now. like a like a big plane, you know. So you so you've been to the states, then you've you've done some traveling. Yeah, man. I've been to the states, uh, Europe, UK. Really? What led you yeah. to do some traveling? Just just want to see the world, or man, it's uh like from where I'm from, it's like one of those like small towns where it's like, uh, if you don't leave, you get stuck. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's one of those ones where it's, so I grew up very opposite to, to my family who are very like, this is where you live and this is where you stay. And you might Mm -hmm. travel out, you know, maybe two hours away to go for a holiday. Uh, and I think it's like, I was in a band when I was younger. So I used to travel uh, like, uh, to different cities and whatever. Um, and then you start to meet other people and you realize like how cool other people are. Mm-hmm. And then you just, just ex- the cultures and the freaking, it's just, just the way people think, man. Like I'm always like super interested in the way people think, like what makes people tick? Uh, and you can't do that in your hometown because you already know it. You, you, sure. you understand why everybody does everything and why the way, how they act and how they respond. And it's, uh, I guess if you're one of those people um, like that are naturally inquisitive. You, you're like, well, what else is out there? You know? So then you, you travel. Um, traveling's good, man. Have you, have you done any travel in terms of like, I, I know, know you've been on a plane, but car rides? Uh, minimal. You know, I, farthest south I've been is uh, West Virginia. Yep. Farthest west I've been is Chicago. Farthest north I've been is Maine. Yep. So a little bit of traveling, but not too much. And a lot of that just, you know, has to do with finances, really, you know just the financial aspect of it, you know, it's expensive to, it's expensive to travel. Oh yeah. You know, so while maintaining, you know, a house and bills and all things like that. So, you know, I'm really hoping that Bitcoin is, yes. you know, cryptocurrency is going to be, you know, my ticket to clearing my debt and really being able to enjoy life. 
uh, without yeah, being a slave to the system, you know. This week has been a crazy week for uh, for crypto. It has Such, been. It has been. Are you are you a crypto guy at all? Or just are you- just started getting into it, man. I uh, I can see the importance behind it. It was one of those things that I I, I was a very against it to start off with, like um. So there's two times that like Bitcoin got mentioned to me. One when it was like, it was super cheap, like maybe a dollar a coin or something. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, that seems super dangerous. And I was like, like, you know, it's, it's just sort of one of those things that you money's been the thing that you right. grew up with and your parents and your parents' parents and your parents' parents' parents. You know what I mean? It's always like that currency that's based off something. So then it's like, well, where the fuck does this money come from and how is it worth anything? Right. Um, and then I got told about it again back in like 2017. And it was <laughs> my dumb ass. So stupid. It was for me. Like I was, I was a PT at the time and I had a, he was a financial advisor and he's like, you need to buy Bitcoin. I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I think back then it was like, you know, two to $4,000 a coin. Right. Uh, and I said no. And uh, now I'm paying for it dearly. I could have had yep. squillions of dollars, but I don't know. You I know, think it's I, just. I'd say 2020, you know, it's. Yeah. It's one of those things. It's like, uh, it's, I, I guess when people invest in anything, they always like, they always base it off the premise of time. Like, oh, I should have done it like five years ago. So I'm not going to do it now. And, uh, and then right. five years pass. They're like, fuck, five years ago, I should have exactly. done it. Just, uh, I think just hook in, you know, just hopefully. I think it's still new in the game, you know. I think oh, it's yeah. still early, way, way early, you know. It's and anybody that's been thinking about it, I, you know, I'm not a financial advisor, you know, at all. Yeah. I need to put that out there. But, uh, you know, I think now is a good time if, you, if you're ever thinking about it for sure. I had a, um, a podcast with a, a guy who's like heavily invested into crypto. He's, uh, he's made tons of money. Um, and he, he made like a really good comparison between, uh, the changing of like, so back in the day before like this, this traditional currency of ter- in terms of coins and whatever, it was like, people were like, like, you know, trading seashells and, and rocks and mm-hmm. you know shit like that. And he was like, so right. when, when the coin came in, it was a bizarre and odd thing and only a particular group of people had it. But then when it changed over, like it really flipped over on its head and the people who got in early at the most, you know what I mean? And like you said, it's incredibly early days. It's really daunting to go, I'm going to put a hundred bucks or a thousand bucks or $10,000 into, into something that's worth fucking 80 grand for a single thing. And you know, I think it's like, we always base it off like this tangible thing where it's like, where's crypto? The crypto has to, has to work. I think when you look at it logically, um, Whereas like the traditional like money is based off gold reserves and, and shit, you know, that tangible thing. And that's like, as humanity grows and the population keeps growing and there has to be a better way to, to do money because money is stricter. For sure. Yeah. And you know, I'm not too familiar what central bank you guys operate under over there or how familiar your audience is with the federal reserve over here in the States. But uh, you know, I've been, I've been, tracking the federal reserve for a while and um you know really recognize that they are the problem like the central banks dude are such a problem in my opinion uh the secrecy the freaking you know it's it's corrupt they're not even federal at all yeah you know the federal reserve was established in 1913 over here and it's just they operate behind closed doors in secrets. Oh yeah. And they control our, and they control our entire economy. And it's like, people don't realize that over here still, you know, there's still people there that think the federal reserve is a branch of the government. You know, it's just, it's mind blowing. Yeah, you guys have some, like, uh, like we're not too different here to be honest, but ours is just like, nobody gives a shit. But over there, like you guys have things that make people question it. I think it's like your student debt is the thing that I'd go, something a bit iffy about that you know what i mean Mm -hmm. it's like it's a bizarre like ultra inflated uh only like a select few get an education and be able to pay it off uh and Mm -hmm. you cannot wipe that debt and it's just shit like that with your money that just doesn't make it doesn't really make sense 
I think the problem is, is that, you know, there's this idea that everything should just be free, you know, everything should just be free and it's paid for on the taxpayers backs. You know, yeah. it's, it's bringing the middle class to a lower class. Cause who's going to fork the bill for it? Nothing's free. You know, it's, and they, and nobody questions like, well, where, how is it free? You know, the federal reserve just prints money endlessly behind closed doors and, yeah, you know, it's the whole banking system. And that's why I love Bitcoin because, you know, it is decentralized. There's only so many that can ever be produced. There's no inflation that can come from it. Once they're all out there, they're out there. But with the student debt thing, man, you know, nothing in this world is free. That's one thing I was taught when I was a, a, a young boy was, you know, nothing in this world is free. I, yeah, you know? I couldn't agree with you more. But it doesn't have to be that expensive. No, it doesn't. I, I agree. I think know. that's, that's a, like me, I'm, I'm happy to pay for my education because I know mm -hmm. it, it gets out of it. But at the end of the day, my degree doesn't cost me fucking a huge amount of money. I think, I don't think it's like the paying of it back. I think the, there's a, uh, there's an interest attached to those loans. Isn't there over there where it's not I just, there is, yeah. that's fucking is. that. That is the crazy part. It's not the paying for the education. I think education should be paid for, but I think mm -hmm. there should be uh, like a supplementary income for the people who can't afford it. Um, it's 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 hard when you. I think if you grow it, up it poor, it's very hard to get into a, a university, and then secondly, it's hard to pay for it. So I think that <laughs> that needs to. But the fact that there's fucking interest on your student loan, it's like. Here, we're going to educate you to get you into a better job where you pay more taxes, but you're going to have to pay this fucking thing off where we're going to keep adding money to it. Yeah. You know what it is? It's one big monopoly game. Yeah. That's what it is. That's, they, you know, it's bananas. That is you know, fucking they crazy. They create money out of it is bananas. They create money out of thin air and then they give it to you. And then, like, oh, well, you need to pay back. It's, 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 it's mind blowing, man. And it's sickening. And, that that's kind of leads me to the Bitcoin uh, future, the decentralized future. You know, that's the future I want to see is of decentralization. And you, I think cryptocurrency is the, the way to that, you know? I believe so too, man. I, there, there's no way the, the old system works. But the only problem is, is like, how long until somebody fucks it? I guess they can't. They can't. You're talking about crypto, the blockchain, or... Like there has to be, it can't just be this smooth sailing for a while. Like there has to be an issue with it. But it, but it has been smooth sailing for. Oh yeah, for now, yeah, for, for a while. Long, you know, for, for because it long. requires so many different node holders and so many different functions for it to work. There's no one private entity in control. You know, <laughs> this bug is back, man. I can't. I thought I got it. No, I'm sorry, man. Yeah, no, I no, couldn't you're... agree more. It's uh, and I and I think it's a good way for people who. Once again, like me, I'm I'm not a big fan of leaving tons of money in the bank. Uh, considering it doesn't doesn't really do anything, doesn't really move. Like I do have a savings account in uh, like with my bank, but I I use my my crypto as like another form of savings. A little riskier, sure. but so far I've, I've made money. Like I definitely For haven't sure. lost any money. Even though like even on these big dips like we're going through now, mm -hmm. I'm still up. It's normal. Yeah, it's healthy. But, and it's normal. It really is. You know, and versus like a 401k, you know, I like to have my crypto money like there, like you said, it's kind of like an emergency savings a little bit to build and grow on. Thing about the 401k is they don't let you take your money out for 40 years. Yeah, that's right. You know, you, you put money into this retirement plan, but you get penalized for taking it out. Screw you. You know, like I think that yeah. to me is is crazy too you know yeah i think ours is taxed when you get it out like they tax you for the money that you've oh, already paid ridiculous. yeah that, they're it's, trying to do that with cryptos too i think it's like 50 percent or something yes like, it's, which, it's bananas yeah. uh, when did you start crypto you said 2020 no i've been in crypto for about three years now i've, yeah, been, nice. I've been getting into it so i started out with litecoin that was like my first favorite token was you know litecoin which is cool yeah uh, what do you do? What do you got now? Just bitcoins and uh, you know, I, I'm, Ethereum's. Uh, I'm not an Ethereum fan, no. Neither am I. But I sold by yeah, I like ADA. I like I'm a ADA. you know Cardano guy, and I'm a big Theta guy. I'm a big Theta fuel guy. Yeah. Um, because Theta, I think, is 
they are leading the front lines for like infrastructure, crypto stuff, man. If you haven't heard of Theta, I uh, highly recommend that you check them out because it's bizarre. That's uh, that's been one that's been like on my my watch list. I'm kind of like teetering on Theta. You know, getting it and then not getting it. I'll look at it and I'll be like, whoa, and then I'm like, no. Um, but it's definitely there. Um, I feel like it's so undervalued, so undervalued. And this is just my opinion. But yeah. if you look at their team, you know, they were the co-founder of YouTube helped develop it. He developed it. And they're like one of the only cryptos out there, one of the only companies out there that's consistently releasing and uh, dropping updates, you know, and following through. They got their Theta TV. They got the Theta wallet. You know, the 3.0 is coming out here the end of June. A lot of big things coming with Theta. May 2nd, they're uh, live streaming the first time ever the World Poker Tour, oh. which is pretty fascinating. Yeah. And I think they're going to be doing some like NFT stuff on there with that as well, which NFTs are huge too. I don't know if you've heard much about those. I've I've only like started seeing it. I'm like I don't understand it. I don't. I don't understand it, <laughs> but my intuitions tell me that it's gonna be big. Yeah, that's right. It's uh, yeah. it's such a bizarre thing. It's so it fucking really... weird. It does like, I know enough to know to be in it and involved and have my uh, you know, have my my foot in the race sure. kind of thing. But I outside of that, it's so fucking confusing. And it's like, it's digital art, man. You know, yeah. it's digital art bought on the network like ethereum or theta that's so you crazy know? it just is, it is crazy it's so it really is people uh, are paying you know thousands so and thousands fun. of dollars for a piece of art that is just you can put on a usb drive <laughs> yeah that's, that's <laughs> you know what i mean that, essentially that's i think that's what it is that's crazy so. stuff man the world is is heading in a direction man it's uh it's really spiraling spiraling towards something um and it would be interesting to see. Like, we are definitely going to see it in our lifetime. Oh, for sure. Which is for sure. Which, which is fucking terrifying. Uh, it's like, is it? Is it? Or is it like it's, exciting? It's terrifying, but it's like of... beautiful at the same time. It's like this, right. like I don't know. It's like a fucking hot mess, but for you sure. can't. It's it's beautiful. It's fun to watch. It's just that I think hopefully, like our generation has the. Uh, the capacity to not be like older generations where they're so rigid. Um, you know what I mean? Where it's like, it's new, it's scary, mm -hmm. fuck it off. Rather than like, so rather than like. You're seeing a lot more open-minded. Yeah, definitely. You see people yeah. lean into this sort of stuff more and it just needs to be fine-tuned. Uh, I think especially with uh, like racial groupings is a big one where we. It, I, I don't, to me, it's like, I think I didn't really grow up with it, so I don't really understand it, but I see it where it's like you'll, you'll racially profile somebody and then, and then demonize them for it for, for nothing really. So like racism in my brain, just, it doesn't click. It I, doesn't for me either. You know, it's just, I, you know, I feel like we're all the same, dude. I feel like, yeah, now we're all humans, man. We're all here to love one another and, yeah. you know embrace that dude like i love that you yeah. know like that's what it's about man you know i think it's just like even if you boil it down it's just like doing something with your fucking hand tied behind your back imagine like having like this really wide scope of human imagination and intelligence and emotion and then being like like your skin's dark in the mind i don't want to talk to you it's like it just doesn't make any fucking sense it doesn't with. make any sense uh, i guess you know, it was uh, sorry you go uh, I was going to say, you know, that like we hear about this through the news and everything and this problem. And, you know, I'm I'm not saying it doesn't exist, that it's not out there, but, you know, everybody I meet, it doesn't matter what color their skin color is or anything, man. Everybody's friendly. You know, everybody wants to just love one another. And yeah. that's, that's, that's what I see. You know, you very rarely run into these people that the media tells you are running around out there. And that's how much of it I wonder is propaganda, you know, and, and when you turn it off, you step back and you just start to love your neighbor. Yeah. You no. Know? And, ba and, you know, based on their character, you know, and love people like that's where it's at, dude. You know, that's where you start. That's how you that's how you fight back against that. You know, if you want to fight back against uh, racism, then quit feeding into the racism 
turn off the TV that's telling you, you know, and, and putting these subliminal messages in your mind, you know, turn that crap off and go out and, and, and connect with people, you know? Yeah. Just uh, talk to them. Yeah. Talk to them, you know, start a podcast. Just or whatever. start a podcast yeah. and just For start sure. hitting randoms up on the internet. I think it's one of those things. It's like everything you're told not to do as a child, like don't, talk to strangers on the internet and we're like fuck that that's actually yeah, like, uh, all i'm going to do just right talk to strangers on the internet and see what happens yeah, for sure that's um, awesome what are things like over there at the moment over in the states man as far as what go as far as what it's just like know? like i guess like once again from a strange point of view we only see bad stuff like it's it's a, the whole plane crash thing man it's like I think, uh, what was the last thing that I saw? I, like I said, I don't really read the news. I think there was like a group of people, uh, the KKK is back. And I think it was is them. It? Uh, yeah. Apparently from, from what I read, or from what I saw I've heard of it. and they were out the front of a building, just doing, doing their KKK thing. Uh, not really a fan of anybody, but white people. Um, you don't see right. that. Where did I see that? I, I'm not familiar with what you're, no, I, you know, all this crap about, you know, white supremacists and all this stuff. I I'm calling bull crap on that, man. You know, I feel like it's, it's an attack. I feel like there's an attack on just the average American that wants to live their life and mind their business and, 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 you know, follow the constitution, man. I, I'm, I'm a libertarian, you know, I don't lean left. I don't lean right. You know, both sides are just as corrupt over oh, yeah. here and, and bought and paid for, you know, and this whole idea that there's like white supremacy and stuff just kind of blows my mind because I don't, I don't think there is, maybe there is on a, a smaller level. I, yeah. you know, to anybody out there listening, you know what I mean? That's dealt with, you know, uh, assholes, <laughs> you know, you know, you're going to have that everywhere you go, yeah. you know, but on a large level that the media is portraying, I, I just, I'm calling bull crap on that. You know, I don't, yeah. I'm not buying it. Uh, you know? I think it it is a bit nuts. I think it's so hard to tune away from it. You know what I mean? And, and not just go, that's, that's immediately what it is. I, but I think that's, uh, that's, that's it on both sides, right? Where it's like, so even me seeing that, I'm like, that's there and that's happening all the time where it's like, like you said, it might not be, might not be happening as much. It is happening, but just small little sex of it where it's, where it's particularly bad. But uh, the biggest thing that you, I'm seeing over here right now, um, and this is what the news off and everything is people is, is the divide and conquer te techniques that have been implemented with masks because there's such there's so much dis disinformation and stupid policies that make zero sense with masks over here and it's really divided people in a lot of scary ways you know even right down to family members being divided over policies and ideas that just really have nothing to back them you know yeah at all and there you know when this all started a year ago uh the governor shut the entire state down and i mean all these mom and pop businesses, you know, we we've lost so many businesses here in PA and it's so sad businesses that have been around forever just because the state said that you couldn't have more than, you know, six people in a, in a place, a restaurant, you know, you have to wear your mask to walk through the door, but once you sit down at the table, it's fine. You can take it off and, yeah. and just a bunch of ridiculous, uh, you know, mandates coming from the governor. And like I said, man, we lost a lot of businesses because of that. And it's so divided. It's, it's kind of scary and sad, you know? Yeah. But from, from like our point of view, like from an, like a straight, we, we got shut down too. We didn't handle it the best, but we definitely handled it better than some. Um, it's, it's hard not to compare things. I forgot who I was. I, I was talking to David Weiss about this. Do you know who David Weiss is? I do not. He's a flat earther. He's, he's from, uh, he's from over there. And he's a, he was a ride. What a fun, what a fun chat that was. I bring him up too much. I got to stop. Um, it's good, man. You know, it's a, Hey, you know, if you want the flat earth theory talk, I'm all about that. Bro, you, get, <laughs> you hit him up, man. Hit him up through matchmaker. He'll, uh, he'll have you on. Uh, you won't say too much, but he'll have you on. But it's, it's one of those things like you guys did handle it bad because your rules were so choppy. 
uh, and your rules are so choppy uh, uh, and then not and then the people making those rules didn't do it themselves so it's like how how do you know you look up to these government officials and they're giving you these like half ass answers to things it's like you can do this but you can't do that but you have to do this while you're doing this it doesn't make mm-hmm. any fucking sense and then you see in the newspaper that they're fucking doing the thing they told you not to do exactly so obviously there's going to be a bit of a kickback but then you look at places like new zealand like new zealand handled it so well like ridiculously well so like the the big thing about the american one is like you say the businesses and like a lot of people were left out New Zealand handled it so fucking well where they were like, we're shutting everything down immediately, but you'll be reimbursed for it. Like, here's a bunch of money. Just let's ride this out. And then they were like one of the first countries to come off the uh, off the lockdown and, and just go back to normal. You know what I mean? So it was like, I think mm-hmm. even when you guys found out about yours, what did they offer you? 1200 bucks? Yeah. That's fucking crazy. Like, what is that over there in terms of wage? Like a month, uh, two weeks, two weeks. It's, um, you know, twelve hundred bucks for me is, you know, yeah, it's like, it's like a month. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and that's straight. You know what I mean? Yeah. You stretch yeah. that shit thin. Maybe you get five, six weeks out of it if you're fucking lucky. And you know, you know what, you know what pisses me off about it is, is they pass this big package, and they snuck all this other crap in there, dude. They snuck all this other crap in there, and they screwed the working guy over with twelve hundred bucks, you know. And they line their pockets, and that's what they do every time. You know, they talk about print money. Well, where's all this money going? You know, you start to look at where this money's going. It isn't, it isn't going to relief. Oh, you no. know, yeah. it's not going to freaking relief. It's going to programs that are going to line their pockets. And that's becoming so evident to everybody. And, you know, people are frustrated. You know, people are, are, are over it. You know what I mean? And, you know, I don't know, man. Yeah. It is. You I know. think it's, uh, it's like the American dream though, right? I think it's just this American dream that's, uh, that's gotten out of hand. It's uh so back in the day it used to be fantastic. Anybody had a good shot of it, mm-hmm. uh, and they've done something and they made something with it. But the thing about rich people is they don't want to give it away. Like once right. you earn it, there's no fucking way they want to give it back. Like name one billionaire who's out there fucking giving money to to low income earners. There's not a great deal of them, or you don't really hear about it or whatever. So it's like the American dream is now just perpetuated by families who created this at the start. Now they're just like, it's mine. I'm not giving it back. Uh, Mm. So it just doesn't exist anymore. Right? Like surely, like if it comes down to this point where the world is now shut down and they go, we'll give you 1200 bucks. Like, how is that? How's it the dream? You know, I know. Yeah, I do know. You know, the American dream for me is to just, uh, you know, become debt free. Yeah. (laughs) But which is not like, how old are you? Uh, 30. And you like, and you you're so stressed about debt. Like, how insane well, it's just, is that? It's it's it, I am, yeah. You know, I have I have school loans as well. I yeah. I didn't go to a big college. I went to a, a uh, trade school. Yeah, uh, and I got a electro electrical degree, but uh, like electrician. But you know, I have I have school debt. I have a, a mortgage. I have a house. You know, I have physical assets that I don't technically own. The yeah. bank owns them, and that's a scary thought. You know what I mean? Because, and I feel like that's the kind of society that the banks want us to be in. They don't want people to have physical. They don't want people to have land. They don't want people to have physical assets. They want to own everything. They, you know, they want people to just have this impulsive buy it now, accumulate debt, and. You know, eventually it's going to be somebody else's problem. And for me, the American dream is definitely to become debt free and just, uh, you know, be able to live my life where I'm not enslaved to a system that is going to require me to give up my time doing uh, work that I don't, you know, really want to do just so I can have material items, you know. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a thing though, right? Like, I think you discuss it with a lot of, uh, especially a lot of people from wealthy backgrounds where they go, well, like, why don't you just do this? And you're like, I can't, like I, you, you physically can't cause you're so stressed about paying it. There's no opportunity or mm-hmm. avenues to do something you really enjoy and have a good crack at it. 
Um, it's becoming a little bit like that over here, but it's definitely not as bad. But the idea of owning and running a business is slowly going out the window because it is fucking yeah. terrifying because it's six months, eighteen to six to eighteen months of zero money. Like you don't make a fucking thing. Yeah. And you don't get support for it. And you can't do those things that you enjoy because you, you physically couldn't do it. Like you'd you'd run yeah. out of money straight away. Uh, and then somebody would take your shit. And uh, that's fucking no way to live, man. It's uh, no, it isn't. and you know, like this, the money in general is is like its own. It's like a dark magic, you know. There's something like whoever came up with the idea that we have to pay uh, people at the top of the pyramid to live on this planet. You know, we incarnate on this planet, but yet we're automatically enslaved to a secret entity, essentially. Uh, to survive to live on this planet you know the, we pay for the most abundant thing on the we pay for water which is the most abundant thing on this planet you know and, there, and i get the reasons behind that you know uh pollution and and things like that but uh i need to purify it and stuff but you know it's just which kind of ties in too with like free energy and and free sources those things are definitely being suppressed you know and it's just, it's just like there's this entity, this secret shadow entity behind the scenes, man, that, you know, <laughs> is pulling the strings, in my opinion. You know what I mean? That's a, that's a really big thing in the States, isn't it? You guys have what? like the, the stonemasons and the Illuminati. And- oh, man. It's not big old, I thought those big all over the world, dude. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, like, so here, I think uh, we know that people are controlling it, but there's, uh, there's, it's just new, like I think the newspaper, like we, we consider the newspaper one of those people that are, are controlling things just because, right. but it's one of those like blatantly obvious ones where you'll read an article and then see the the exact opposite thing play out on like a social media thing, you know what I mean? Where it's just, right. it's just like that old style, like I just got to sell, I just got to move units, uh, clickbaity yeah well Tough the thing is thing. man is you know conspiracy theorists the definition of conspiracy theorist is someone who questions uh the statements of known liars and they've been caught over here the news corporations the politicians the you know the people essentially running the show have been caught time and time again just lying 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 screwing the american people over screwing you know everybody over man and it's all lies and 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 that's why these things have developed. That's why these conspiracies have developed because, you know, they've been caught in the act, red-handed lying. Like you said earlier, you know, with the governor of California, he, you know, he imposed all these restrictions on the state. You can't do this. You can't have social gatherings. You can't go to Thanksgiving dinner with your family and have more than six people that at the home. And what's he doing? He's out at a dinner party, getting drunk with all his buddies, you know, no masks on, you know, do do as I say, not as I do. Yeah. Type, uh, and 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 people are tired of that crap, man. You know, <laughs> you know how dare how dare and you know, I don't I don't know if I should say this, but do it, say it. But you know, ever since like the George Floyd thing that happened, um, you know, which there's a lot around that, and I don't want to get into that too much. But how dare they, you know, have a massive march? for funerals but then tell people that they can't go to their own family members funeral because of covid i mean what a freaking just that just you know frustrates me yeah. you know you got mil- you got thousands of people marching for the funeral of this guy and then you got state governors telling people they can't go to their own mother's funeral and have more than three people there like that to me at the same at literally the same time you know well so that's a thing though right but it's like a lot of people look at that situation and they blame the marches it wasn't the marches it was the, the government allowed all of this and they dictated it it's uh so once again i think it's like if you're at the tip of the spear the easiest way to control these people especially in america because it is such a left and right place it is like that's all i hear uh left and right left and right left and right and if they keep you guys fighting in terms of this left and right shit then it's mm-hmm. easier for them to just step back and just keep doing what they're doing. It's right. that, that that just fucking common misdirection. So like even in, like I said, that situation, I know a lot of people and I've even heard it where they're like, but the fucking marches, it wasn't the people marching that was a problem. It was the people right. fucking dictating these rules that saying like, I'd be pissed if I saw people marching and then I couldn't 
I couldn't go to like my what, like my whatever funeral. You know what I mean? Right. Exactly. Like I'd be pissed. And then what do you do? You immediately blame the closest thing to you or the closest the thing that you hear. And, but you don't look at the top and you go, well, it's not their fault. It's this fucking dickhead up here. That's well, that's been the general consensus. It's been like, it's this dickhead up here running the show, you yeah. know, uh, that, you know, everybody elected supposedly. And yeah, I don't, I don't fuck with elections, man. I think, yeah, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's not even worth it anymore. In my I opinion, you know, like, so we, we have to vote here. Like it's, uh, it's mandatory. If you don't, you get fined um really yeah dude yeah yeah well it's not a big fine i could find 20 bucks for not voting in the last how do you, how do you like that law though that has, that just seems unjust and like i mean like i think laws are laws and i think you got to play in the realm with of 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 what society gives you i think no matter where you live like if if you moved here you had to play by our rules and if i moved right. over there i'd had to play by yours and i'd understand that but it's like i think like there's a there's a few rules that like I was talking to to a couple of guys from the UK where uh I think they can stop you and search your car for no reason like they could yes, just go, they pull you over right. and they go yeah. get out of your car we're gonna search you mm -hmm. and that's what we don't want to happen over yeah. here you know that's why that's we a, have the Fourth Amendment yeah so that shit know, doesn't to, happen here man yeah. you know what I mean like I, yeah. well, I I don't think it does it's uh but like. So it's like laws are laws and you can kind of like, obviously laws have been created because it's happened before and it, it needs to, but then there's obviously the, uh, there's an aspect of it like being created to, to enforce particular rules on particular groups. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'd understand that. Um, fuck, I forgot where I was going, but in like in terms of like, um, uh, like elections, I've never believed in elections. I've, I've, I don't think I've ever voted sincerely. And I like, I know so many people, especially from Australia, are going to hear this and they're like, you're throwing away your vote and you're, you're making the problem worse. But fuck you. Like, I don't believe mm -hmm. in the system. So why am I going to be a, an advocate for something I don't believe in? Why right, am I, sure. why am I forced to, to vote between two people that I, I think are just, like. Like, just as bad as each other? I can't yeah, do it. Like that. opposition, they, you know, where they most more than likely have both been placed in that position. They already know who the winner is going to be anyways. Yeah. And I, I don't do know it, what man. your elections are like over there as far as local ones go, but this last presidential election over here, if it did anything, it showed people that they need to focus more on their local elections in their local cities and, uh, and who they're going to be putting in those positions, you know, because, you know, on a higher level, you know, the, all these people are bought and paid for, you know, if you want to make changes, you got to start in your local community, you know, for sure. And, uh, get involved in those local elections. Problem with local elections for me though, man, is, you know, they're awfully boring, dude. <laughs> they're, yeah. You know, they don't have they the same excitement. Awfully boring. Yeah. They don't, like, <laughs> you know, your, uh, your elections over there are wild, dude. <laughs> they, uh, uh, they, are. they truly are, man. I remember watching the, uh, the debate, I just watched one of them for about 10 minutes and I was like, holy shit. It's, it's theatrics. It's, it's, it's all it is. It is the, it, it, that's exactly what it is. It's just like, you know, it's like a freaking, you know, it's like a terrible B Hollywood B movie, dude. It's, yeah. just, it's, it, it's embarrassing. You know what I mean? And it, at least I feel embarrassed. You know, I, I, little, I think yeah. a lot of people should. It's like, like, even you know. if you take your side out of it, you can look at the other side and go, that's embarrassing, right? Like, mm -hmm. so you can agree to that. But then it's like, I think the point of it is, imagine watching that debate and then somebody's like, you have to choose between these two. Mm -hmm. Like, pick one. And you're like- That's essentially what they do. But you know, I don't want here. to. I don't want to pick. I don't want to pick between those two. They have just had a debate and they look really dumb. Uh, I don't want to pick either of them. And like, well, then you're a piece of shit. And you're like, what? <laughs> like, right. That doesn't make any no. sense. Like- I don't want to vote for two dusty ass dudes who just fucking right. argued for two hours. You know what I mean? It's right. Who you look at their voting history and they've literally flip flopped on every issue and they're up there on the stage, literally telling you, you know, Oh, I swear I'm going to make a, yeah, dude, it's all bull crap. Theatrics yeah. for sure. But it's, I think you that's know. a thing. That's, that's everyone all the time. Like, mm -hmm. I, and I think it's like, um, even like the local ones kind of do it a little bit and they're like, we're going to do this. And you're like, you a hundred percent not like there is no, no, Nothing no fucking realm of possibility where you're going to do this and they piss in your pocket. Uh, and then it's the same shit. They just, they, they get in there. They do like, I think it's mm -hmm. like, you have to look at them as like, they just see it as a regular job. 
You know what I mean? Sure. It's like when I go, sure. when I first step into a new role at a job, I am keen beans and I th- say I'm going to do things. And then six months in, I could not give a fuck. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like everybody yeah. has that mentality towards work. And for you to think your politician is any different, for sure. Like there are ones out there that are going to care, but then there's the ones that are just like, I'll tell you whatever I need to tell you to get this job. To get reelected, to get their pension and yeah. their freaking, like, yeah, for and, sure. And then I'm going to kick it up the back and just, you know, we have like so many photos of our politicians falling asleep in parliament and stuff. <laughs> That's crazy. You <laughs> it's know. just like, you get it paid is. like two, three hundred thousand dollars a year to Isn't fall that asleep. Crazy? And that, that's the thing, man. There's, there, there's no, there's no accountability. That's the worst part about it. You know, it just seems like, you know, the corruption can continue. There's no accountability. And, you know, that's kind of what's led me to where I'm at now with like the whole uh, going back to, you know, we don't really have much control over it. Like, and it kind of leads me to that spiritual part of everything with, you know, like feeling like we are souls passing through on this planet to learn and grow and kind of move on and, and evolve into the next uh, density realm, you know, and what's going to happen on this planet and what's going to happen on this earth may be out of our control, but what we can't control is how we choose to deal with it, how we choose to uh, grow and learn, you know what I mean? And connect with other people and try to uh, help people be the best they can be, you know what I mean? And that's kind of, you know, stepping away from the politics, looking at things from a different perspective, on how the change I want to see, you know, the planet take in humanity kind of with consciousness and things like that. So, yeah, man, like, but as you said before, it's that, um, it's that individual level. Like everyone needs sure. to start doing a lot more looking inside, like Absolutely. taking a good long heart instead of falling into this group that, like I said, it's, uh, where do you want to stand in life? I guess, do you want to be a part of a group that you don't, honestly believe in half their shit you just want to feel accepted or do you want to be a part of a much smaller group where everybody's on the same page and you're happy with yourself exactly Uh, dude and that's what it comes down to you know focusing on what makes you happy you know you know like what chase what makes you happy what you want to do you know and I think that's that's what it's all about, dude. You know, you keep raising your arm up, and I, I've been meaning to ask you. I want to ask you what that tattoo's about on your arm, man. I I see that. I it's got, got a, some good. Oh. I got a couple. I got uh, an Indian. That is cool. Um, I've got a. Oh, fuck. Which one? I got a bear. Yeah. Okay. I got a. That's cool, man. A flower and a fish. So, um, the Indian. Awesome. In the Indian was a. Uh, we did an album cover. Uh, which was like uh, an Indian girl with a big the headdress. Uh, the flower, my sister has a, a, a feather, rather. My sister has a feather. Uh, the bear is from uh, me and my friends used to be called Bad News Bears. Uh, cause, okay. Because we were in cool. trouble. Uh, and, the, and the fish <laughs> is awesome. uh, the fish is for my brother. My brother has like two, uh, he's got like the koi fish and a lionfish on his arm. So I got, him, uh, I got them for them. But uh, yeah, it's good stuff, man. That's cool, man. Uh, yeah, good tattoos. They suck. I hate them. I hate them so bad. What about you? You got any tattoos? Yeah, I got a few, man. I got one. I don't know if you can see it here, yeah, but yeah, I can see that. it's it's a Aquarius. It's an Aquarius tattoo. It's got my natal chart wrapped down uh, my forearm there. There you go. Uh, yeah. So I, I have a few different ones. I have a uh, We the People. I don't know if you can. Oh, it's hard. It's down ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it. Yeah. The different ones. So. But yeah, man, that turned out really cool, man. You, you guys got a lot of tattoo artists over there. Is that like a big thing over there? Or is it kind of? It's becoming bigger. Know? It's um, Australia used to be like super conservative, like super like old school, where it's like tattoos. <laughs> with, like, and I'm sure it's everywhere. But like, right. you know, if you have tattoos, you're a criminal. You know what I mean? Or if you're a girl <laughs> and you have tattoos, you're a slut. You know, that's right. You know, but now, like, people are really like, you know, you can yeah. have a government job with tattoos now. You know, as long as right. it's not you're like your face or whatever, but you ever you know, thought about getting into doing it like yourself or no? Me tattooing people? Yeah. Fucking hell no. I am a no. horrible at drawing. I'd fuck it up oh, so man. bad. You know what <laughs> I mean? Funny. I just what about you? No, dude, I saying the artistic ability is not too much there. You know, I do enjoy painting. I like uh acrylic painting. Yeah. I've been getting into that and I've been doing some YouTube videos as well, uh with with like painting painting with kenny i call it yeah um you know which is cool but as far as like the freehand uh you know 
tattooing, drawing stuff. Couldn't do it, man. Yeah, it's a you know. it's a straight up skill, and it's, uh, it truly is. It, it truly is. It's a skill with like not a very like not a, a wide window for error. You know what I mean? If you fuck it up, that is that is on. The, <laughs> I know, right? Forever, <laughs> you know. For you sure. That thing burn off. I did, Kenny. I got to bounce, man. I got to. I got to get some work done. But it's so good talking to you. Dude, I always was, have a man. fun talking. I, you know, I had a lot of fun, dude. Uh, you know, thanks so much for, for, you know, cross. Yeah, that was good. Here. That's that's what it's about, though. Like I said, if you want to do the flat Earth thing, hit up David Weiss. Yeah, I'll, I will. I'll have to. I'll have to look him up. He's on. A, he's would, definitely on Matchmaker. So hit him up on okay. that. And uh, I was unable to. I was unable to record any of this. I got so it. if you I if you, you could send it to me, man, I would I would really appreciate. Hundred percent. I'll um I, I recorded it. I streamed it anyway. So um, but I'll I'll send it to you all after. I'll send you all the links and shit as well, just so you you get access awesome, to it. Man. But uh, I right, Kenny, man, have a good day, legend. I'll talk to you soon, brother. You too, buddy. We'll see you. Best of luck, bud.